I wonder what we're going to remember 2021 for. I think we know what we'll remember 2020 for, right? Like, we will never be able to think of the year 2020 without thinking of COVID-19 and the pandemic. They defined the year. And some years are just like that. Like, we can't think about 2001 without thinking of 9-11, right? And then we all have personal things. Um, I can't think of the years 2010 or 2012 without remembering they're the years my children were born. Some years have standout moments in them. What will we remember 2021 for? There's another year I've been thinking about lately, 2019. I remember that year because it's the year I got to become your pastor. And y'all were so awesome in the way that you welcomed me and my family. That struck us right away. You didn't just welcome me as your pastor, but you welcomed us into your lives in a really real way. I remember meeting with y'all right here in this room for listening sessions. Some of you came to those. 130 of you came to those, uh, gave up an hour and a half of your free time to come and sit here with your new pastor and answer questions like, what's been your highlight experience at Silva First? Or if you had one wish for this church, how would you use it? The way you gave your time to talk with me in those sessions really helped me to understand the heart of this church. So like when I asked you what your highlight experience was at Silva First, far beyond any other answer, you talked about mission trips, service projects, working together uh, side by side here at the church. And so I knew right away, this is a church that likes to serve. But most telling was when I asked you if you had a wish for the church, how would you use it? way beyond any other answer, your answers had to do something with youth. You wished for youth, youth ministry here at this church. And hearing those answers, I think that's when I completely fell in love with you as a congregation because I know that what you love and what I love are similar because I also, place a high value on servanthood, and I also love youth ministry. And I started to dream and to hope that God would bring those things together for us as a church. So speaking of years and what we'll remember them for, uh, here's another year that many of you will never forget, 2005. Some of you remember it as the year that the Christian Life Center was built. Some of you remember it as the year our church took on $1.6 million in debt. And that was another thing that I felt right away as I was listening to you as your new pastor, the heavy burden of this debt and how very much you wanted to be out from underneath it. Which brings us to another good thing about 2019. By the end of 2019, we we hit a milestone with the debt. For the first time, we were under the $100,000 mark, uh, moving from six figures to five figures. And then as challenging as 2020 was, a really good part was watching that debt continue to drop. As it moved from 95,000 at the beginning of the year to 85,000 in July, 70,000 by the end of 2020. And that's when our leadership really started to dream. What if we could remember 2021 as the year we burned the note? That would be awesome. And then on the heels of that, what will we be able to do with that extra money in our budget? Because every year we budget $18,000 to make loan payments. When we have that money back, 
what can we do with it? Remembering some of the history of this church, remembering the heart for youth ministry, we started dreaming of a youth director. I mean, $18,000 could get us a part-time youth director. Wouldn't that be at the heart of what this church wants and what this building was designed for? That's what I had been told. Uh, told stories about teenagers running in the streets and needing a place to be. But, you know, I, w I wasn't here. And I realized I needed someone to check me, to make sure I was really understanding correctly why this building was built, why this church had a call to it in the first place. In other words, I needed to phone a friend. I needed to call someone who was the pastor at that time, one Paul Christie. Well, Paul, thanks for being my phone a friend. Absolutely. And <laughs> coming um, so that I can hear uh, straight from the horse's mouth about what it was like um, to build this place. And I know as a pastor, there's very few of us who wake up in the morning and think, I want to take on a new building project today. So I'm guessing there had to have been a really strong sense of call to, to take this on. Um, so wh what, was, what was that like? Like what, what drove y'all to build a Christian Life Center? Well, yeah, I mean, it, you're exactly right. None of us want to wanna say, yeah, let's go get a church in debt and build a <laughs> building. Um, but we had a group of people that had been praying about this uh, for quite some time, had a visioning committee that was part of this, and we wanted to, to build something for the whole community, mm -hmm. not just for us. Mm -hmm. And so I think that drove that, and that was the kind of the God moment for me. Mm -hmm. You know, we said we're going to build this, this family life center and have a gym. There are gyms all in Jackson County. Right. But this was going to be more than just a gym. Mm -hmm. And so that, that kind of led us down that path. When y'all pictured down the road, like what, what kind of events or people or programs this would ideally be filled with, did y'all have certain things in mind? Not really. We were going to go where God was going to lead that. Mm -hmm. But but we, again, this was more than just coming and playing basketball, although I loved having a basketball court in my backyard. Um, and Zach did too, our son. Um, but we, we had things like father-daughter dances for the community. Mm -hmm. uh, we had events where nonprofits would come in here and they would use this space. We had Western uh, Carolina come down and use this. So it, again, it was that community mindset. It wasn't just for us. Mm -hmm. I've heard a good bit of talk about like that the teenagers of the church were just kind of overflowing um, the campus. And so uh, you, youth ministry had a, a part to do with it, right? Like not Ab exclusively, but. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, uh, Linda Haggard and Bill Haggard did youth for many, many years here, and um, they really grew youth ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, First Methodist was the place that any kid would want to be, and uh, we, we literally were out of space. They were in the basement of the old church, mm -hmm. and if you've been in the basement, there's not a lot of good space down there. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and so that, that started helping to drive this mm -hmm. uh, because we knew we could thrive even more uh, with that. But yeah, thankfully to the, to the Haggards and many others who helped with that, uh, that was a driving force mm -hmm. here, sure was. So. That's awesome. Well, I really appreciate you giving the time to, to be here and help not just me, but those who are new to our church help get a little more of a sense of the, the history and the calling behind a building like this. Absolutely, and I'm, I'm excited for y'all to see where God's gonna lead you now, because there, there'll be things happening here that you haven't even envisioned, and there'll be people who learn about Jesus that aren't even born yet yeah. through this place. Yeah. So that's a neat thing. So thank you for your leadership, man. Thank you, Paul.
So talking with Paul really helped me to understand better the call behind building this. Yes, it did have to do with youth who needed a space because this is a church with a passion for youth ministry, but it also had to do with the community. Essentially, this is an act of service, this Christian Life Center, wanting to serve the community, people beyond the walls of this church, by having this space available. That started me to think, maybe we need to think a little, a little bigger than just a youth director to serve our church alone. And what really pushed us beyond that was a management team meeting where we were kicking around this idea. What if we paid off the debt and used that money to hire a part-time youth director? We started to get a little pushback. That after a year of pandemic, when so many people are suffering more than ever, maybe there ought to be more of a service component to it. Maybe we need to use the funds available to us, everything that we've been given, to serve beyond the walls of this church. And, and that led us to a really cool intersection of youth and service. As our dreams started to expand beyond a part-time position to a full-time position, one that would be made possible by partnering with a great nonprofit in our community called Heights. They actually have an office here in the Christian Life Center and for a little over a year have been running programs here in this building. And because of that, we had already been talking about, wouldn't it be cool if we had an after school in a, in a space like this, where the most at-risk youth could be served, could have a place to be. What if we could marry these two dreams? And so we started talking to Heights more, and I want you to learn a little bit more about Heights today. Uh, for that, we need to call in another expert, Marcus Metcalf, who is the executive director. Hello, I'm Marcus Metcalf. I'm the executive director of Heights. What is Heights? Heights is a community nonprofit here. We work in Jackson County in the Western Carolina area. Uh, we provide um, child and family mental health to the most vulnerable children and families in our community. Uh, we do this through specializing in critical access points, uh, working with public schools, uh, juvenile justice, and social services uh, to really identify and meet the needs of our most vulnerable students. We do free after-school programs that are tutoring and rec therapy, um, free summer programs that involve all the things that people come from all over the world to do, the rafting and the hiking and the climbing and the fishing and um, animal therapy and rec therapy and gardening and job skills and all of the things that we know that go into the wellness of a community or the wellness of a kid. Um, sometimes that's buying food, sometimes that's buying shoes, uh, but, uh, but more than anything, it's, it's connecting those students to somebody that cares about them and hopefully changing uh, the trajectory of their lives. So the question has been asked is, uh, what would adding additional resources be able to provide for Heights or the services that we provide or the community at large? Um, if the church was able to add more after school resources, if we were able to hire someone to help do some of these programs and services, uh, then it would allow us to, um, to do more programs. It would allow us to take the programs that we're doing currently uh, two or three days a week to adding maybe even five days a week would be the vision, right? So I'd love for these kids to have a place that they could come every day after school and have a safe place where they could get some help and know that they belonged and be connected to people that care about them. Um, it would allow us to do more stuff. It would allow additional resources to um, cooler activities, more tutoring, more academic support, more music, more games, more things. Like a, we, we need to start filling the space if it's going to be done in any kind of effective way. Uh, and more than anything, it would allow us to serve more kids. Um, the more that we can bring to the table, the more resources that we can add to this problem, 
then ultimately it means more kids can be served, that more lives can be changed, that we can have more impact in this community, and that's something that we're pretty desperate for. So here we are. You've seen kind of the evolution of this. How it started with, um, frankly, an already extraordinary idea of let's pay off the debt in 2021. And then it evolved into a little bit bigger dream of let's, let's use the reallocation of funds to hire a part-time youth director to minister to our church. And then this really extraordinary goal of what if, what if this could be a full-time position that reaches not just the youth of our church, but the youth of this community to also, who, who really need it the most. But like with any extraordinary dream, uh, once we got to this point, I, I started to get a little nervous. Some of us started to get nervous. Is this financially doable? Is this sustainable? H how do we make this possible? And thankfully, like in so many things, uh, we are a body of Christ together. And we have smart people who are part of our church who are really good at thinking about those things. People who are on our management team, who are on our human resources team, who have wrestled with that question with us. Uh, and we have Jeff Goss here with us today, who is the chair of our HR team and also has graciously uh, given his time to chair this campaign and work on some of those logistics. So um, I'm going to step aside as the English major for a moment <laughs> and let the attorney explain some of the nuts and bolts of this to you. Right. So when we started going through this and thinking, how can we make this happen? What can we do? Our first step was going to be paying off the debt. The debt is currently around $65,000, and we've made a lot of progress in the last five, six years in knocking that down. But we need to finally get to that point where that is beyond us and our obligations. When we do that, once we've paid off the debt, that'll save about $18,000 a year in monthly principal and interest payments. And that's the piece that makes the youth director position something that we can fund from the church on an ongoing basis that frees up immediately to our budget without raising any additional funds, frees up about half the cost. Mm -hmm. And then there's the piece that is the, uh, the faith, the, the stepping out a little bit here, and that's the partnership with Heights. And so the goal of this campaign would be to not only pay off the debt, but also raise some seed money in order to start that partnership with Heights in order to fund this position for a three-year period in order to give it an opportunity to grow and get started and then really start working on the fundraising and how do we budget this and make this fit in with our church finances as we move forward from that point. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have a goal of raising $150,000 in total. And uh, in the upcoming weeks, you're going to be hearing more information, getting more information about um, specific levels that you might reach for. But as you get that information, I want you to be well aware that any amount toward this cause is a partnership in this. And so whether you give $1 or $100 or $1,000, this is another way that we work together as a body of Christ. It doesn't matter how much, any amount means you get to be in it with us. Um, and so when we celebrate burning that note and hiring this full-time position, you get to celebrate with us and to be a part of it together. That's absolutely right. So we'll be sending out uh, pledge cards that will be going in the mail. Uh, you'll also receive those via email. And you'll see on there, there is a uh, list or a chart of suggested donation levels. And those are just as a suggestion. You don't have to donate any specific dollar amount that is seen there. Uh, but that is there as a guide to help you in thinking about what might uh, be the commitment that you and your family are able to make to this campaign. Uh, Rose and I have made our commitment and uh, we're happy to support this and see this through and I hope that others will join us in this effort. Mm -hmm. And Alan and I have made ours too. We, I mean, we, we are excited, um, frankly, not just for how it's going to benefit our church and our community, and I know that I will, but for our kids too as they grow up into this. You're right. Selfishly, there's no doubt, uh, Mary <laughs> and I, we have kids who are going to benefit from this. Uh, when Rose and I started attending Silva First a little over 10 years ago, we had a newborn baby Gideon with us. And we came to this church and picked this church because we saw a congregation that had a heart for youth ministry. And there was a vibrant youth program at that time. Frankly, that program has, has gone away and it's not what it was years ago. Uh, but we have a group of students that is approaching 
the youth ministry age and we want to make sure we have something there. So I'm excited that this gives us an opportunity to have something selfishly for our kids, mm -hmm. uh, but also for other kids in the community who can join in and be a part of that. Yeah, because there are so many kids who don't have the benefit of what our kids have and to be able to provide them that support network um, so, that, uh, so that they can grow and recover from this pandemic as we want all our students to. So as we turn the corner, um, we get deeper and deeper into this new year, into 2021. And we wonder, what are we going to remember this year for? I hope um, it's not the pandemic that we remember 2021 for, that we remember this as the year as a church, that, that we made this extraordinary step to go beyond paying off the debt of our Christian Life Center into an investment that will help us use this building as it was intended to from the beginning. Absolutely. I'm so thankful for the folks that had the extraordinary vision to build this years ago. Uh, it was difficult. Uh, there were times where at one point the mortgage payment was $12,000 a month. Uh, it was hard on the church to get through this. And there were folks that have committed and contributed over the years to make this happen and get us to this point. And I think it'll be a nice moment to celebrate with all of those who have over the years given back to this and say, we did this. We, it's done. We're moving forward and we're seeing the vision that this building was created for actually come to fruition. So as uh, we move on from here, if you have questions, um, I know Jeff welcomes calls. I welcome calls. Um, we, we love questions. They help us to make this idea better. So reach out to us and we look forward to partnering with you on it. Thanks. Thanks.